Mm-hmm. Father, we just thank you for the day. Thank you for my brother and um, the things that he is using his platform for, Lord God, um, to honor you, to serve you, to bring awareness to the body of Christ and beyond. And we just pray that you would be honored, you would be glorified, and you would be um, just the center. Lord, you said you in your word that you've given us the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, um, reconcile your church as one um, body with one message. And then, um, Lord, would you reconcile this broken world to you um, at the foot of the cross for your glory's sake. And so um, just go before us now and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So one question I wanted to ask you, my friend, Ray, is how can the Calvary chapels, how can our churches be that healing balm to the underlying pain that our African-American brothers and sisters deal with that really, and honestly, before some of this latest happened, our the, your white friends didn't truly understand. How can our churches be that healing balm? What, what do you see? I know you've been thinking about this a lot, and I know you've been questioned about this a lot. And so um, I would say probably, Tom, uh, one of the ways that would be helpful is utilizing your platform mm-hmm. you know, to, to stand with um, hurting broken brothers and sisters in the Lord. Um, and even as I've been sharing with others is just um, to allow your platform to speak to a tone that um, with people that maybe don't look like you, think like you, and act like you, um, but but really we have finality in Christ. And so using that and bridging those gaps and being intentional about really having the conversation instead of one trying to fix the conversation or fix the problem, or and as well as um, a, 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 or act like there is no problem. You know, um, we have redemption, right? Um, yeah. by the blood of Jesus Christ. However, um, what I believe is in the church is considered residue. And um, and the church, because we have biases, and, and this, is, this is honest on both sides, we have biases. It's not just, oh, it's time for the, the whites to get them their act together. It's we have biases that we need to have a place where we dialogue about. We Sometimes we don't even know how, how biases are played out because we don't have the conversation. And I believe personally, if you want to go deeper in relationship, you got to have the difficult conversations. And I see a lot of times as I've been around that people want to keep their relationships on the surface. Um, That's right. You're right. And, and, and they really don't want to, you know, iron sharpening iron kind of thing, you know, sparks flying. Oh, oh, I was offended by that. And so we tiptoe around certain conversations and then there's really a shallowness. And then the other thing I find a lot of times is a lot of people are hiding behind the knowledge of the word. And so you know, their defense is, oh, the Bible, and the Bible says this, and so this is the fix-all, cure-all, but you don't never get to the person because, it, you know, the Bible is like their shield, and they'll never let you into those places where they're hurting and um, going through things. And so um, I think that that's a beginning place and a continual place. It needs to be continued. One hour session, you know, is not going to fix it, but as we collectively come together and use our um, platforms, our churches, you know, challenging the, the, the people in the congregation to, to really get engaged with, with people, invite people to your homes, you know, you um, meet people, you know, get back to what real core, um, evangelism is, you know, um, the great commission when you're in the Walmarts and the superstores, you're not just having to get to the next location. Really allow the Holy Spirit to get you uncomfortable as you're moving about life. And so um, that, that I really believe is a big part. Yeah. And Ray, I, I know that you've had a great relationship with some suburban churches. And, uh, and they've actually even come alongside of you, uh, knowing that you're in a 
urban area. I, I don't think I've, did I mention that, 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 that you're in um, some, in some areas that are, are not the, or that where the projects are. And you're in Newark, New Jersey. You can say it, Tom. <laughs> in the projects, man. <laughs> that, that it's tough there. It's tough. And that it's, you know, life is different there than it is in the suburban churches. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, we were talking before we came on live is that you've had a, had a church down in Arizona that realized what was going on in your church. And they and the Lord led them to support you to be a part of your support so you could go full time ministry. Because at that time you were working full time down in the heart of New York City. Am, am I am I right about that? One hundred percent right. Yeah, that's one hundred percent right. And we wouldn't have been awarded the opportunity to do what we do at the level that we do it um, had the Lord not touch that church's heart to do right. what they done um, for whatever duration they had done it for and are doing it um, had not been for the Lord, um, we would not have been able to do what we're doing right now. Yeah. Right. I mean, and you were working a full-time job, doing ministry every night, plus preparing sermons, plus ministering to those that were hurting. And after a while, you were going to break. Yeah, don't forget the, the wife and four kids. <laughs> Four kids. Right. Yeah, right now you have a house you know, full. Right. And I tell you honestly, I didn't realize the level of the treadmill, how fast the treadmill was running until I got right. off of it. And then somebody warned me and said, um, be careful because you're just going to be trading treadmills. Enjoy this time that you receive right. because things are shift but you'll be able to focus in on, you know, what you need to focus in on. And so um, that's, it's been a shift. It's probably not as crazy, but very um, directed in um, the time. Best. And so, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely changed and for the better. So Ray, tell, tell the viewers here. And by the way, I'll stop right now and just say, this is calvarymagazine.org. You'll be able to see this in its entirety. Uh, go to Facebook or go to our website, calvarymagazine.org, and people can click on and watch this. It will be stored there. And so and go to our Facebook page and all that. So, um, and I'm with Ray Dash. He's the lead pastor of the Rock Christian Fellowship in Newark, New Jersey. He is in a inner city urban area, uh, and God is doing miracles at that church. The Lord is moving mightily. And I would encourage any church or every church to come alongside either Ray or some of our other brothers that are ministering in these inner cities, whether you're in L.A. or Baltimore or, or Newark or New York City, that that is an incredible mission field. Um, and Ray, could you address a little bit of kind of what kind of help all you could use from some of the suburban churches? I mean, not, you know, not 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 just a one hour meeting but an investment of of their investing in all you that in in the inner city how could that impact for for eternity how could that impact on these racial issues that we're dealing with in the church now well i'll tell you right i was just in the projects on father's day we spent our father's day afternoon and evening and night um, in the projects and um, I won't forget how one of the guys who was here working on some of the repairs that lives down the street, um, how when Arizona, some of the servants from Arizona was here laboring, he mentioned just the other day, Sunday, that his life, he said, I really love those guys. I love those guys. Like, and, and they stay in contact on Facebook and, and calls, but he said, man, like, I'm glad I maybe had not gotten a lot of time with them, but I'm glad for the time I did have with them. Um, I love those guys. And so, um, you know, the, the, again, getting out of your comfort zone for the glory of God. Right. And, and, and one of the things I would say is come, you know, a lot of times we're letting the media narrate, um, our realities. And, and now 
not the reality. You know, everybody in this neighborhood is not a killer. Every, and even the killers that I know have a tender side to them, you know? And so, um, and, and everybody's not trying to rob you. And even the favor that the Lord has given us, hey, if you're here with us, God is, is our protector, even even before that, right? Like, <laughs> that's right. He's given us favor in this neighborhood because we've we've engaged with the neighborhood. And so I would say for others, hey, you know what? Short term, long term missions help us help us. Um, we, we have an opportunity right here, right now to redevelop this place. What I desire to see long vision is, you know what, to have, you know, a lot of our guys here, um, they're, they're, they're doing bivocational, you know, it, it takes a load on them. Right. And then yeah. the other part of the vision is to develop this place where, you know what, I believe if we build you know, supplemental income, you know, um, and engage the young people and the people in our community to be the employees of these places, then um, it will just generate and revitalize a community. Um, and I really desire to see this place like a workspace environment, um, you know, even some type of cafe kind of things um, um, where on another floor there would be um, what you call re-entry programs, working with the city, just teaching trades. Um, and then also on this site, we could put, you know, residents, kind of like college dorm rooms, where if somebody wanted to come and stay for a duration of time, they could because we have the kitchens, we have, you know, the laundry room that, that's here already, you know, um, right. so they wouldn't have to worry about rent. We just have to build the space, you know. Um, that vision in, in light of this location uh, would be incredible and vital for a neighborhood. I'm talking to the guys right now about being better dads and, and really engaging and really passing the baton, something worthwhile. And so, you know, all your money that you're making instead of buying, you know, Jordans and all of those things, then perhaps if you put your money together, we can start buying things in the community and start building and investing in our neighborhood. This is our community. It's my community because, you know, Tom, I moved down here four years there. You were right? Ruthie, four kids. Yeah, the yeah. whole family four years ago, packed up, lived in the suburbs, you know, and, and God said, nope, that's over. You lived the American dream. Now it's time to go down and, and roll up your sleeves and be right on site. And so it's my community. And and so we're trying to put the neighbor back into the hood. And so it's no longer we're going to be wild. called it the hood, but this is a neighborhood. And Hashtag, God, I like that, man. Put the, put the neighbor back in the hood. Right. And so um, that's our desire. And, um, and we have the guy's willingness. So it's not like I'm, I'm talking to these guys and they're like, man, go ahead, man. We're not doing that. Um, I think it's prime time and what's going on in the, in the world that people are waking up. And seeing like, what have we done? Because I'll tell you honestly, I, I really believe it's a reaping time. We, we've sown to the flesh and we have to own that. And so it, it's also reaping time. And, and so, um, but it, it doesn't mean that, that there can't be revival. There can't be an awakening. And if you ask me, what can the suburban church do? Get uncomfortable, get uncomfortable. Yeah. Just the same way that Chuck got uncomfortable when those hippies yeah. was coming in the church. Get uncomfortable because you know what? God tells us, don't be afraid of men's faces. And, and you know what? There's a lot of tattoos. There's a lot of external, you know, I'm rough and tough and all that stuff. But underneath is a la underneath those layers are tenderness, is value, is purpose, you know? And, and just like any one of us, we didn't have a, a uh, we weren't walking in our God ordained purpose until he redeemed us out of the darkness. Out of the darkness. Right. Yeah. And of course, we know there's as much darkness in the in the suburban communities, but the suburban churches could really hit this mission feel and and there won't and this could this could really help. There won't be uh, another thing, another happening in Minneapolis or Atlanta or Ferguson. Because and you know and then talking with um, 
uh, the guys out in L.A., they were telling me that the LAPD is really doing amazing things out there in the community. And, and so and we're going to highlight that in the magazine and to just show people that, you know, that these different police departments, they're not all. I mean, there's some great people in these police departments, too. And if we can engage them to be a part of the community, then there, then there won't be this this schism, you know, between right, the right. police and 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 the people they are there to serve mm -hmm. yeah we have um i believe some good guys on the force here so this is this is what i have done this is what i believe the lord has led us to do so being that i live here and am very involved in the community um i've deferred that um responsibility to someone else on our team um, that, so they deal with the police engagements and stuff like that as the church side um, That's good. Because, um, you know, the, the guys on the street just think they have all these perceptions. And, you know, really, the, honestly, the enemy could use that to close doors and, and lack of trust and so forth. So I, I've chosen to do that and, and and not go in that route because it's given us an, a, big, a better open door um, with the guys in the neighborhood. Um, you know, we're the godparents of you know, one of the guy's kids and the kids stay over our house. And, you know, like, why in the world would you ask us to take care of your kids? And but that's because we built relationship, you know, exactly. And yeah. So, um, you and, and then what did what, what did Jesus do? He built relationships. That's right. Absolutely. He down and, he, and he broke bread. He ate with the Pharisees. He, he ate with the lawyers. Uh, he ate with the people ate dinner with the people, no one else, the tax collectors. Tax collectors, that's right. And, 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 even, and, they, and he even became his disciple, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Matthew. Yeah. So right. it's just, yeah. And so, you know, with, with an investment into the inner cities, I mean, you know, and, you know, maybe some people will fly to Newark, but there's also each area has its own Newark or has its own projects that if we as the church could get involved in our community and in the and the, and also what i'm hearing a lot from a lot of different guys to be that father figure because it seems like that's that's a problem we're dealing with right that a lot a lot of young men do not have a father figure in the home is Absolutely. that correct so yeah. you know a great majority these young boys do not have that influence of dads. Um, either they're in jail or just absent. Uh, you know, I take, for example, a young guy that's in the neighborhood. He's about 12 years old. Every time he sees me, he runs to me. I go to give him a shake and he jumps up in my arms and wants me to wow. catch him, you know. Um, or, you know, like... You know, we have um, three young ladies and this sweet, precious girls right now stand with us. And, uh, you know, their dads are not involved in their life like that, like they should be in being responsible, making, you know, these kids, but no investment into their lives, you know. Um, and that is valuable, especially for males, because there comes an age where boys think like, oh, if my mom hits me, you know, that doesn't phase me. Um, I'm going to go do what I want to do. And if every time you walk out your door, you have the peer pressure of the gangs and, and being accepted in that circle, you know what, every, you, it, it gets played out after a while. Or you think that those are the guys who have the things, they have the protection and they have the things. So why not that, you know? Um, but I think overall, if we would embrace a kingdom mindset, Right. When you have a kingdom mindset, Tom, you can go into the grocery store. You can go and pray, God, give me wisdom on the church that you want me to embrace and partner with, whether they are a Calvary chapel or not. You can really get behind something as God gives you wisdom and discernment. I think we need discernment to know what the spirit of God is saying and who we should be engaging with. And who he's saying not right now with, right? And, and yeah, once we yeah. have that, we'll have the assurance to say, you know what? I, even though this feels uncomfortable, I know God has spoken to this. 
this is not my stuff. This is God's stuff. And so therefore, I'm going to go and invest in that network. Or, you know what? God has spoken. And nope, I'm not going to invest in it because this is what God has spoken. And when we give him that authority, then you know what? We're able to, again, function in a kingdom mindset where wherever God has us, we just recognize we're just the vessels of his stuff. We're stewarding his stuff. Mm, yeah. You know, I was just reading this morning, Jesus on, a, on the way to the cross. He was focused on the cross. That wasn't comfortable. Mm. The cross was not comfortable. Right. And, and Jesus was, had, was focused like flint, the word says, mm -hmm. going to the cross. Right. And we have to have that same mindset as Jesus had, that, that, that this is a lot easier than the cross to go into some of these tough neighborhoods. And yeah, so, yeah maybe you'll be frightened a little bit, but at the same time, um, that it's not, you know, like you said, there's, it's, it's not a gangster on every corner waiting for you. And, and people would be with all you, would be with the church, mm -hmm. which gives that. And I remember you telling me when you started in that neighborhood that, you were amazed at the Holy Spirit's safety net that he put over you because a couple times you were wearing the wrong color shirt and any other time <laughs> someone could have got shot with that. That's absolute, you know, um, but I definitely believe that. Um, yes. Right. And, and it starts. It starts with being on our face, man. That's, that's the honest truth. The church getting back to not leaning on our own understanding, not depending in our own wisdom. You know, what is prayer? Dependency, right? Oh, um, but we neglect prayer. So even though we say we're dependent on the Lord, how dependent are we truly being on him when it comes to matters where um, that's unsafe, it's not that it's unwise. You think in your mind it's unsafe. And so you miss out on this taking the step of faith that God has called you to where you can turn around and testify, wow, we took that step of faith and we saw God do this. Yes. Um, and so we miss that amazing. and we say, oh, man, God's working in this way because we're doing. But you know what? There's so much more as we, again, get uncomfortable for his glory. And step into that place where it's like, man, you know, like when I think of Ezekiel 47, where, you know, it, it says that, you know, he measured out and then he called me out. Right. Ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep. But then he says in one part, it says he measured out again and he called me into waters I couldn't even swim in. And I believe right. God is calling us out into some waters that we couldn't even swim in. Hey, you know what? Because then like you're drowning. God, I need you. And I need you. You're the only one. But we must remember that he's the one that's measuring out and he's calling us out to that place. So he's not calling us out to drown and to lose our lives, to die and, and all of these things that the enemy is trying to put in our hearts. And I believe even COVID was a reminder of that, right? Like, hey, we don't know what to do with this thing. But God, what do you have to say? I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much or lack of money you have. Every single one of us was put in a position. And if you did not do this, you missed it. But every one of us was put in a position where we had to turn our faces towards God and say, God, what would you have me to do in this? And how, as far as the pastors, how would you have us to facilitate this place that you've given us responsibility over? And so if you didn't do that and you just tried to figure it out, you, you missed it. <laughs> you missed it, man. That's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. And it's 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 amazing how the, if we came really not even out of COVID when things exploded racially mm -hmm. and it just led right into it, you know? Right. Yeah. We might have we might have not been in this situation if we had not been in shelter in place. Yeah. That's the truth. You're like, man, I gotta go to work. I can't yeah. do all this, you know. Yeah, but yeah that's cool. that's the truth. Yes. Yeah. I'm just gonna remind everybody. I'm I'm here with Pastor Ray Dash, the lead pastor of Rock Christian Fellowship in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, it's it's a wonderful fellowship there. They have really 
cultivated a loving, inclusive atmosphere at the at the Rock, um, and it's it's just a it's it's just a highlight for me when I get to talk to Ray and hear what's going on at the Rock. Um, and I'm going to just mention everybody that if if you're coming in late, you can see this whole time together at calvarymagazine.org. We'll have it on Facebook once that records. It'll be on our website, calvarymagazine.org. And I'm supposed to say like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. I may get that backwards, but that's all right. They know what I'm talking about. And so, uh, hey, just real quick, in the last minute or so, uh, you you know, some of the problems that inner city churches are dealing with, you, you've mentioned about, you know, the fathers, the lack of fathers and the drugs and alcohol. Now, and, and that's, that can, that's overcomable. I mean, it's like, you guys are down there in those areas and you are dealing with that, but you are overcoming what the enemy has put in front of you. Mm. And, and, and you, you all, you all, you are being a light in that, in that area by this two, two housing projects that, like you said, even a young boy who's 12 will still run up to you and jump in your arms. You know, I mean, that's, 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 that's a testimony right there, brother that so you guys are being a light in the darkness there and so we want to encourage the suburban churches we want to encourage them we're going to highlight this in the printed magazine too that there's so many areas where we can now minister and we see that time is short we know jesus is coming back soon we want to be ready we want to be doing his work and what better place to be doing than helping our brothers and sisters in the inner city, in the urban churches. So I would just encourage those churches out there and all of us to come together and to use this bad situation that's happened, that's exploded all these racial issues, that let, let's be about the Lord's business in this and come alongside and, and be partners in this so that the next, that there won't be a next time like this. That's right. That's a good word, Tom. Ray, what would you, in closing us out here, before we pray, what, 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 what are some inner, what are some thoughts you'd like to share with our, with our listeners here, on, on how, how, how important it is, not, not to let this bad situation pass by without us growing, and, and, and being in the Lord's, uh, under the Lord's directive here. Well, Tom, I think of. The time that we're in, like, you know, for example, in Chronicles, it tells us that men of Issachar were men who knew the signs of the time. And I think that we are seeing the signs. We're living in a new, a new thing, right? Like this is, we haven't seen these times in our lifetime. Um, and I really believe engage with the Holy Spirit and you sense that and even though these are perilous times even though these are you know uncertain times one thing is for certain that Jesus is still the only true hope and he is the living hope that we have right and so we've received that it's time to be distributors of that and I really believe that God has shaken up our world and also has, I can speak for ourselves, he's given us a freshness. There's a, there's a freshness about our gathering. There's a freshness, you know, just even in the time that he has us in. There's a freshness in the mission that he's given us. Um, there's just a sense of his, you know, his nearness, but just this fresh thing like that's happening. And, and I believe that in the quarantine time, there were some things we needed to find in him. And so on the other side of that, now I want to encourage people, even if you haven't found that, even if you even if you went through the quarantine time and wasted time right now, right now, God is moving. These days are dark and you and I have the hope that people need. Period. Right. Yep. What yep. we need to do is be praying for 
not just, hey, let me give you the Bible logos word. We need to be praying how to give people rhema word, timely word as we're listening to people more instead of just, hey, hear this. This is how you fix the problem in the urban community. No, no, no. Listen. Jesus didn't do that with the woman at the well, right? He right. engaged her. He could have told her, hey, you know, we worship in spirit of truth. Shut your mouth. You know, <laughs> he didn't do that. Right. He engaged her with, yeah. like my pastor wrote the book, Patient Evangelism. Evangelism. I was there with him and when right. he wrote to Abby. I was down at 9 11 with Lloyd. Right. And remember, it would, I, I, I was reminded of recently what he did then because I was around that atmosphere as well. And what was happening, he was saying, hey, put your t shirts away and stop sticking tracks in people's faces. Right. You know, put your Christian t shirts. Listen. Yeah. Listen, people listen, are broken, listen. they're hurting. And so this right. is just another event in the time of life. And it just right. happens to be in one that it makes many people uncomfortable. Right. And That's so right. God has rolled back the carpet and said, stop just trying to vacuum the top of the carpet. There's some crumbs underneath the carpet that up, you need man. to deal with. That's right. Move the yeah. furniture around, you know. Right. And, and I just believe like, hey, this is the time that the church can move in power and in wisdom because there are many people that, you know, why are they tearing up stuff? Why did you, you know, like maybe you didn't do all of that when you wasn't walking with the Lord, but you did some things that you're not doing now because of the, with the impact, the transformation that the gospel has had on your heart. If yeah. not, we'd be doing one of those things or something in this era. Yeah. yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up, you know, is we, we, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, mm -hmm. and 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 we're expecting unbelievers to act like like we like we think they should act, you know, and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, they're, they're, they're acting because they, they don't have the Lord Jesus Christ. Our job is to share the Lord Jesus Christ with them. That's right. That's right. Yep. So, so yes. I promised you I wouldn't keep you late. I could talk for another hour, brother, but yes, with me you. Me too. Because <laughs> yeah, this is hold so exciting. Second. Just hold on one second. Hold on one second. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we've been here with Pastor Ray Dash at Rock Christian Fellowship. And check out our... Uh, our um, Facebook, CalvaryMagazine.org, Calvary Chapel Magazine. Uh, we have the story we did a couple years ago on The Rock when they were, it was a couple years ago before before Pastor Ray was even full time. And uh, so check that out today and this will be on later. And uh, so go ahead, Ray. I, I was, I think you had something for us. No, I was, I was just listening to you. <laughs> yep. So okay. now that's good, bro. So, Pastor Ray, would you close us out? And thank you so much for the. It's been exciting to talk to you. It always is, and get to share you with our family here. That that's a big jug of water, man. Just keep drinking that, man. <laughs> I try to do a gallon a day. <laughs> that way, if you finish that, you know you've done your job. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like it. So, so anyway, so I just encourage the people to go and listen to the whole time with Ray. And, uh, and you know, we'll, we'll need to revisit this in a while. We'll, we just don't want to leave this. We, we want to see what progress. We, we, we want to see what the Lord Jesus has, what's he's, what he's done, how he's pushed people, how he's guided people into filling this void coming alongside of our inner city churches. So, yeah, we're just looking forward to seeing what God's going to do. Yeah, and I will um, in, invite anybody if there's further clarity um, or questions. I want to be able to serve others in, in the context that God has placed us in. Maybe you got a person in your church that has a burden to go into an urban context, and they don't know where to start. You know, you can learn a lot from a dummy. I made a lot of mistakes <laughs> along the way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can help you with some pitfalls, perhaps, you know. And so, right. He could um, he, he learn, he, he learn a lot of things not to do so he wouldn't make the same mistake. Right. right. <laughs> so my email is p.ray at 
therocknewark.org, or you can, um, that's P dot R A Y at therocknewark.org. Or on Instagram, you can DM me at um, Ray Dash JR. Ray Dash JR. Or um, I'll even be willing to give you a number. It's 862-218-0108. That's 862-218-0108. And um, we're just here to serve, man. Um, it's only by his grace that we've had the opportunity to do what we have the opportunity to do. And i um, looking forward to much more because I believe we are in the midst of a revival and on the brink of an outbreak of God's spirit, um, really moving in the hearts, but it happens and he's already ejected us out of the church. <laughs> and so out of the church building, but we right. are the church and we are. Yeah. under these circumstances, uh, we can really make a lasting impact in this dark and dying generation. And, and praise God that you have a godly wife alongside of you, Ruthie, who is... Can't do it without her, man. Anytime you go start going astray, I know she's there to kind of... Uh -huh. <laughs> That's I right. see something going wrong right now. That's <laughs> right. Keep, keeping you straight, brother. Yep. <laughs> That's what our brides do. You're not going to smile about it while it's bad, bro. She's going to let you know, and, she gonna, <laughs> and everybody else will know, too. <laughs> That's right. So, man... Pastor Ray, would you close this out in prayer? And it's been a privilege to be with you, brother. Absolutely. Thank you. Father, I thank you for Tom. I thank you for Calvary Magazine. I thank you for the movement, God. I thank you for your church, bigger than even the movement, God, but how you're working in lives, God. And I pray that your spirit would um, just continue to stir us, continue to get us uncomfortable, continue to move us in areas that we wouldn't normally uh, move in, God, but that we would be obedient to your spirit, that we would be men and women of prayer, and that uh, we would be moved by your spirit to impact, Lord, broken, lost people. Um, God, get us uncomfortable for your glory mm -hmm. and bless, bless your church, Lord God, and use your church to be a blessing in this day and age. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't miss it. Lord God, um, building little kingdoms, but that we be about our Father's business, building your kingdom. Have your way in our hearts. We repent right now of any areas, Lord God, we have overlooked um, um, being just selfish in our own ways, God. And we ask that you would just be glorified through our lives, Lord God. Stir us. Give us a desire once again um, if we lack that. And I pray for anyone that may be peeking in that yet come to know you, God, I pray that right now at the foot of the cross, they would just say, I surrender to you, Jesus, and that you would change them, transform them. May they have a lasting impact in their lives and get plugged in to a place that will build them for your glory, God. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. So I'm Tom Price. I've been talking to my good friend, Pastor Ray Dash at the Rock Christian Fellowship in Newark, New Jersey. It's been a pleasure. God bless you, my brother. Bless you too, my brother. Thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. Yes, yes. All right. To the wife. All right. Same to you.